everybody. So today we have Tisha General from Midwestern University College of Dental Medicine in Illinois. Tisha, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thanks. I'm excited to be doing this and I hope everyone staying safe and healthy. It's coronavirus season, so things have gotten a little crazy, but um, I'm just chilling at home and I'm lucky to be here with my family, so. That's awesome, that's awesome. Well, yeah, once again, we, we thank you so much for giving us your time. I mean, like you said, we have a lot more of it now because of <laughs> but regardless, we still do appreciate you. But let's go ahead and uh, get started, I guess. So can you give us a summary of your dental school journey? So basically, uh, where you're from, where mm -hmm. you went to undergrad, what you major in, and did you or did you not take a year off? Yeah, um, so I'm originally from Houston, Texas. Um, I grew up here my whole life. And then I decided to go to UC Berkeley in California. It's in the Bay Area for college. Um, I majored in integrative biology and I had a minor in nutritional science. And, um, you know, I really didn't know what I wanted to do going into college. I knew I wanted to do healthcare, but I think I've figured it out around the summer after my sophomore year. I started shadowing dentists and I realized like, okay, maybe I could, you know, do this. And then I went on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic, um, a dental mission trip, and that kind of solidified it for me. So um, Berkeley was really challenging academically, but once I kind of found what I wanted to do, it definitely gave me that drive um, to just work really hard for it. So, um, yeah, aside from that in college, I did a wide range of activities, and I think that really helped me, especially when I started interviewing, because I had so much to talk about, and I feel like it made me unique from other candidates. Um, but after graduating, so I graduated in 2017, I took two gap years okay. before going to dental school. So I know that a lot of people choose to study for the DAT when they're in undergrad, but for me personally, I knew that probably wasn't feasible. I wanted to do my best in school. I wanted to do my best on the DAT. So I studied, started studying for it after I graduated. And then after that, um, other than studying for the DAT, I just kept shadowing and I became more and more familiar with the field. And honestly, in my two gap years, I just lived life and I explored the world, so um, especially after I pressed submit to my application. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, <laughs> so I worked in a field completely unrelated to dentistry. I um, have been a dancer, so I followed my passion for dance, and I cheered in the NFL for one season, and I was so blessed. I got to travel a lot. I rode about 60 airplanes in a year and a half. And, you know, I earned money by dog sitting and working at a gym. I spent time with my family. And like, honestly, a lot of this has nothing to do with dentistry, but I truly feel that it kind of prepared me for dental school because I knew a lot more about myself as a person. I was more sure about myself going into interviews and it really gave me the break that I needed to feel refreshed and ready to like sit down and get serious and, be where I am right now in dental school. So amazing, amazing. Yeah, that's my journey. A lot of little gems in there, everybody. So make sure you live your life, <laughs> yeah. especially, you know, I think a lot of people really like do harp on the fact that like, okay, I'm taking this year off. I've applied. What do I do now? I need to still go shadow. I need to go assist. And kind of like you did, I tell everybody, I'm like, go enjoy life because once you're in dental yeah. school, you will be like, dental school is your life for the next four years. <laughs> yeah. Know? So you need to do a lot of the things that you want to do before dental school because you won't necessarily have that much time while you're in it. So no, oh, that's, for that's any awesome. dental student would tell you that. Literally. To literally. just enjoy life, for exactly. sure. Exactly. And so, okay, so you took the DAT afterwards, after you graduated. So uh, I'm sure you were still, like, familiar with, like, how to study and everything. But a lot of pre-dents always ask us, like, what is our – number one tip with regards to studying for the DAT. And so I want to kind of ask you that same question, like, you know, was there a specific method that you used or a specific research resource? Like, what is the best thing that you found to help you uh, do successfully on the DAT? 
Yeah. So um, to study for the DAT, I actually used Kaplan okay. and I thought it was super helpful. I loved it. And, you know, I was successful on my DAT because of it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think no matter what you use, whether it's boot camp or Kaplan or DAT, uh, whatever it is, um, I think it was just super important to manage your time. That was like my number one thing. And for me, like I said, that looked like me not taking it um, during undergrad. And for some people, they would take it during undergrad if they can manage their time. But um, I treated it like a full-time job. You know, I studied really hard for it. Um, and I always had a schedule, just having structure no matter if it's like, what do I want to get accomplished by the end of today? Or what concepts do I want to be familiar with and master by the end of this week? I always had a schedule of what I wanted to accomplish. And um, I think that makes all the difference. Um, so. Awesome, awesome. And so, okay, so you took your DAT, but what about like any type of like pre-dental programs that Midwestern, through for, I guess, pre-dental prospective dental students? Like, were there any programs that you kind of went to or that you heard about that can kind of help pre-dents kind of show face and kind of get some more information about the program? Does Midwestern have anything like that? Yeah, so absolutely. Um, in my case, I was in college in California at the time, and then I came back to Texas for a while. So I wasn't anywhere near um, the Chicago area. But I do know that Midwestern does have a lot of opportunities for pre dents to kind of see the school, get to know what our program's about. And a lot of that is through ASDA, mm -hmm. our um, American our Association of Dental Students. So I know that they um, do like quarterly webinars. They have a whole pre-dental committee. And what they do in the summer is they have this pre-dental day where pre-dentals who are in the area, they can come for the day, they provide all their meals, they give you like swag and stuff. <laughs> um, but you know, you get lectured by our dean, he kind of tells you about the program. Um, they do a school tour, they obviously there's Q&A, there's tons of opportunities to network, but at the same time, you get to do really cool, fun, hands-on um, things. Like, I, I know they made impressions and they got to like keep them as a souvenir and they even did their own CAD CAM crowns um, oh, during the day. Yeah, that's so cool. that's really cool. That's cool. And um, other than that, uh, the pre-dental, or as does pre-dental committee, they, they go to the surrounding schools um, like UIC and DePaul and Loyola and they do Q&As and stuff like that. So there is um, opportunity for pre dents to kind of get to know our program. And for that, I think it's a really great idea to go to our Instagram on Midwestern. It's Midwestern ASDA. And um, they have like a pre dent story. You can message them and they always like post updates about like if they're having any webinars or anything like that. So yeah, that's a cool way that we reach out to pre dents Awesome, awesome. A couple of different resources. That's cool. That's yeah. Cool. Okay, so okay, so you, you took your DAT, you had the grades, you had great experiences. So then you got the interview. And a lot of pre dents are super, super nervous about the interview day, as they should be. Um, yeah. And as they shouldn't be, because I think everybody will say that it's it's never as uh stressful as they expect it to be. So if you can, can you kind of walk us through your interview day at Midwestern? Yeah, so um, when I got to my interview, the morning of the interview, um, first we kind of sit down with the dean and they just walk you through the basics of the school, like um, how many students are in the program. And for our class, it's 130, which um, to me sound kind of sounded really big compared to the other schools that I interviewed at. Um, but you know, what's great about our program is our faculty to student ratio is like insane. It's it's awesome. So even though there's a lot of us, we get a lot of attention, you know, and they just walk you through, like, if you have any questions about financial aid, what's life like in Downers Grove. So our school is in the Chicagoland area, but we're in a suburb um, west of Chicago and it's called Downers Grove. <laughs> I just moved there, guys. <laughs> um, and other than that, they'll take you on a tour to see um, the campus, our clinic, and what I thought was really great about the interviews is that we get to talk to a lot of students all throughout the day. So 
um, during lunch, you have lunch with students. Um, when our dean takes you to the faculty, he lets you talk with the D3s and the D4s to really get a sense of what it's like to go there. And there are times where he even steps out and he's like, hey, like, you know, ask them anything you want. Like, I'm not gonna be around because I don't want you to feel pressured. Like, you know what I mean? He, he, let, he gives you the opportunity to really kind of see if the school is a good fit. And um, our Dean, Dr. Herring, he's awesome. So nice and just like so accessible to us. Um, he says, he, he'll even tell you, you're interviewing the school just as much as they're interviewing you. And so, you know, they just want to make sure it's a right fit on both ends. So, um, so for the actual interview itself, it was one of the deans and I had a student in my interview. It was a closed interview. Um, and again, like, I know it's crazy to say, don't be nervous, just be yourself, but it's true. Um. Yeah. You, like I said, they just want to make sure it's a good fit on both ends. So it wasn't anything scary or crazy. It was very casual, just like a conversation. So. Okay. Okay. And so you said that you, you interviewed at multiple schools, right? Mm -hmm. And so what made, or what was it about Midwestern that just made you decide, you know what, this is where I want to go? Um, you know, there were a lot of things. So for one, just being at Midwestern and even on my interview day, getting to know our dean um, and getting to know some of our faculty, talking to the students, you could really just tell that they were just all excited to be there. I mean, the faculty and, you know, that's something that's carried on to me being in dental school now. I truly, and my classmates and I, I would say, feel like you know, they want to give you the best educational experience possible. And, you know, I came from a big undergrad. Berkeley has thousands of students and moving into a smaller professional school where like their focus is you and that's it. Like that feels really awesome. Like, you know, if I ever have any questions, the faculty are always open to talk to me. They're so accessible and yeah, so I think it was just like that atmosphere, that vibe of like, you know, we love it here and there's a reason we do is awesome. And other than that, when you went to the clinic, the D's, threes and D4s, they seemed so confident mm -hmm. in their work. And, you know, it's so weird to think, especially when you're interviewing for dental school, that that's going to be you in three years and four years. That's not that long. Right. Um, but they were all really excited about it. They get a lot of time in clinic. Um, they get four and a half days of patient care every week as a D3. So it's kind of insane. Um, I know other schools kind of ease you into clinic or maybe you don't get that much time until your fourth year, but you know, they're all in it. They're, they're doing, they're doing it all. So, um, just the amount of clinical experience that they got was something that really attracted me. Awesome. Awesome. And so now I kind of want to ask you about your D1 year and granted, I know it's, it's been a little shaky, <laughs> a little shaky. This, this little bit of it has been a little bit, um, unorthodox, but, um, um there. <laughs> can you uh kind of just let us like or just lead us through how your d1 year has been and i'm talking about like the classes um mm -hmm. do you yourself have any clinical exposure um are you using a hand piece yet things of that nature can you kind of like walk us yeah. through your d1 year so um honestly my first year has gone better than expected mm -hmm. even with like coronavirus and everything that's turned our world upside down um, first of all, I've gotten to meet people and become close to people in such a short amount of time. It's crazy, but, um, school's definitely been a challenge, you know, it's always go, go, go. And no matter where you're going to go, it's going to be tough. But the thing that I love about it is it's nothing that we can't handle, right? Like everyone gets through it. And, um, like I said, we have all the support from the faculty that you could possibly need. Um, so another cool thing about our school is that we actually get all our didactic courses out of the way in our first year mm -hmm. and we're still doing sim as well. We, we get thrown into sim your very first week, very first day, you know, we, I know that other schools might start sim a little bit later, mm -hmm. but we've already been working with hand pieces. We've been prepping. And that's another thing that attracted me to come to Midwestern too, is that you get that early exposure. Um, 
also in our first year, we've already had the chance to be in and out of clinic. So we already know how it runs. We've gotten to see the D3s and D4s work. We've assisted them. And um, that's really cool just to, you know, like I said, see yourself in that position in like three short years. Um, but it's, it's really helped in making us feel comfortable in, you know, being there in that short time. So um, yeah, and taking care of actual real life patients. So we spend a lot of time in sim, but um, it all becomes very surreal once we, you know, step inside the clinic and think like, okay, this is what we're doing it for. And it's a really good perspective to have. That's awesome, that's awesome. Okay, and so I'm asking everybody this question, and I know it's difficult to answer because obviously you haven't been uh, a student at any other dental school, but you know, what's something that you found to be genuinely unique about Midwestern, you know, via, uh, via different combos that you've had with your friends who go to different dental schools, like what's something that you're like, you know what, Midwestern is the only school that I've heard that has this or that does this type of thing? Yeah, um, so I think what's really unique about our school is kind of the way, um, especially for, you know, as it applies to my, my first year, the way our um, classes are structured. Mm -hmm. So instead of having a course for say histology and then anatomy and then physiology, we study it by body system. So we'll take the cardiac system and it encompasses the histology, the anatomy, the physiology of it. And we only take that one class and we finish the class and then move on to our next class. So it's not like undergrad where you're taking like, you know, five different classes at once. Like you truly get to focus on one system, really get to know it, really get to master and understand it and then move on to the next. So I think that was really cool. Um, I thought it was something that was really attractive about the program. And um, other than that, uh, like I said, just having the clinical experiences that the D3s and D4s have, um, that was like pretty insane to me. And it was a huge, you know, drawing factor for me and something that I think sets apart our school. And um, even now, you know, like I said, the faculty are just so open and just, wanting to give us the best experience they can they've mailed uh, or they've ordered these hand pieces that we can use at home to work on our hand skills if we'd like even during these times where we can't be in clinic you know they want to give us what we paid for they want to you know fulfill their promise to us that this is going to be a great educational experience and i think that was just kind of going above and beyond for us yeah. i mean i know a lot of other schools um you know, it's, it's unfortunate these times and a lot of schools just haven't been able to be in session, but um, we're having Zoom conferences and, you know, like them reaching out to us and giving the, us the opportunity to use these hand pieces, practice if we want to. I think that just like really shows what I saw in the interview that, you know, they want you there and they want to make it awesome for you. So. That's awesome. That's I was actually very thoughtful of them. I'm like, yeah. I wish I wish we were getting that, but it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I think like our school is like offering us like uh, suturing kits, which is cool, you know. So that's yeah. it's something. But no, the fact that they're going over and beyond for you all is amazing, and it does go yeah. a long way. You know, it goes a very long way. Um, yeah. So anyway, last question of the interview: If you could go back in time, and give yourself one piece of advice while you're going through the application cycle, what would that piece of advice be? Ooh, okay, so I think if I could go back in time and just knock myself, when I was going through my interviews, I would tell myself to just trust the process. I, I know that sounds so hard to do when you're a pre-dent and you really want to get into dental school and you've worked so hard for so long, but just trust me in the end, it all works out. Because honestly, like I had no idea where I would end up, but I think where I ended up and the program that I'm in, it couldn't have been any better for me, honestly. I'm so happy with it. And you know, one of my big fears too was, so I only applied once, I got in um, my first application cycle, but one of my fears was like, oh, what if I don't get in this year, you know? And I, I think, you know, that's completely valid. People worry about like, what if I don't get in this cycle? Am I going to have to try again? Am I going to have to try again? Honestly, 
everyone's process is different and just trust it because I have so many friends in my program who didn't get in on their first try or even maybe didn't get in on their second try. But now that they're here in dental school, they love it. They're happy that, you know, it worked out the way it did. They love where they ended up and they just have that much more drive and satisfaction of being here. So just trust the process, whatever your process is, just let it happen. Um, of course, work for it, but just know it'll all work out. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tisha. Yeah. If anybody has questions um, and they want to reach out to you about your school, like what's the best way that they can get in contact with you? Um, they can email me. They can reach out to me on Instagram either way. Okay. Um, but my email is Tisha General at Berkeley, B-E-R-K-E-L-E-Y dot E-D-U. Or you can find me on Instagram too. That's fine. It's Tiny Texan Tish. <laughs> And of course, I'll put those both in the description box below. But uh, once again, Tisha, thank you so much from the future DBS family. We really do appreciate you giving us your time today. Oh, thank you. I've had so much fun doing this. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. We enjoyed you. We enjoyed you. Everybody, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. If you have any questions for Terrell and I over at Future DBS, you can always shoot us a DM at underscore future DBS, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. But until next time, see y'all later.